I'm writing this in the beginning of May 2024. A few days from now, I won't be able to do so, I fear. In the vague hope of finding someone in the width of the internet who can help me out, I'll try to retell the events that have led to this moment. In as much detail as possible, I need to find a way to stop them. The authors of this magazine, the entity that is destroying my life, or whatever else is responsible for these terrible articles. First issue, February 2024. Even though the knocking on my door was very soft, it managed to find its way into my dreams, and I slowly woke up. On that Sunday in January, I wasn't quite sure if I actually heard someone knock, or if my brain had just made up the sound. Back then, I didn't know that this sound would cause me a lot of shivers in the future. I rolled out of bed, and slowly made my way to the front door. No one there. Just as I was about to turn around and go back to bed, I saw something lying in front of me. A magazine. The shiny front cover read, Embrace Your Life. Why would someone just drop it on my porch and then leave? I suppose that this was a newsletter published by a religious group, but shouldn't they use their chance and try to talk to me? On second guess, it could also just be a free magazine full of ads. This still wouldn't explain why the person delivering it knocked. But what did I know? I stopped speculating, grabbed the magazine, and went back inside. I hopped back into bed and started to read. After all, it was a Sunday, and I didn't have anything else to do. The magazine seemed to center around lifestyle, beauty, food, nothing you've never seen before. While skimming through it, I was surprised that I couldn't find any ads. When I published this, I read a few headlines which didn't really spark my interest. When I suddenly saw something that caught my eye, stressed at the office, counteract bullying, and finally start making friends at work. If it only was that easy, I thought to myself. For half a year I had been working a more or less boring office job close to my home. At first, it wasn't so bad. Most of my coworkers were friendly, but after a while, a group of women in their mid-thirties seemingly had chosen me as their target. I really couldn't figure out what I did wrong. Maybe I had accidentally offended one of them. Whatever the reason, they started to spread cruel little lies about me. Apparently, I had an affair. I never washed my hands after using the bathroom and was overall a terrible human being. The rumors had evolved, and a few weeks later I started having a really tough time on the job. I felt as if everyone was eyeing me constantly while avoiding talking to me as best as possible. Even though I felt as if there was no real solution to my problem, I was a little intrigued by the article. I started to read, Do you know that awful feeling of loneliness at the office? As you enter the break room, everyone suddenly remembers that they really have to get back to work. Your mails asking for support usually go unanswered. Yes, yes, I know that feeling. And now, keep reading and stick to our tips to improve your life on the job. Our authors have extensive experience in improving the lives of former victims of bullying. I was a little intrigued and continued. First, you need to find the root of your problem. It usually isn't the case that everyone simply doesn't like you. There are a few persons who are responsible for bad-mouthing you. Well, yeah, I know that. I know who that is. It is therefore important to connect to those coworkers who are not involved in spreading rumors about you. Use the opportunity for small talk as one of them has to ask you for help. For this to happen, you'll need to frequent the communal work areas a bit more, especially on Tuesdays. As soon as you've established a little conversation, use your social skills and show interest in your coworker as a person. Ask questions about their family, their kids. You'll see how easily they'll start to like you. Now you can use your base and forge further connections. The article continued for a bit and then ended with a good luck. Him wasn't all of that a bit specific. Not every office worker had the option to choose between personal and communal workspaces. And for all of that to work out, someone would have to feel the need to ask for my help in the first place. Leert. I read on for a few more minutes, then got up, threw the magazine into the trash, and went on about my day. By the next Tuesday, I had basically forgotten about the magazine. As I got to work, I saw that there were some technicians replacing a heater close to my desk. My boss asked me if I would be okay with using the communal workspaces for that day. I didn't really have a choice, so I grabbed my laptop and went upstairs. I typed a few emails when I suddenly heard someone call my name. Angie. It was Steve, a nice guy from the IT department, who sadly hadn't been talking to me since the stupid woman had started their anti-Angie campaign a few months back. Hey, Angie, I know we haven't been talking much, but I was wondering if you could help me out real quick. Do you have a moment? Yes, sure. What do you need? 
I have just reconfigured some details on our web page. I'd like to see how it looks on different devices. Could you quickly open the page on your laptop? And maybe your phone as well. I did what he had asked. Steve seemed happy with the formatting of the page. He thanked me and was just about to leave again. When I spoke up, I went all in. This was such a weird coincidence. I just had to try it. Hey Steve, I was wondering. Um, how are your kids doing? Oh, you mean because of the surgery? Why yes. Sure, the surgery, I replied confused. Well, Georgie is a lot better already. It went pretty well. And Sabrina is coping with it much better than I thought. It's not that easy, but I think we have overcome the worst. That sounds great. I'm happy that he is better. I didn't really know what happened to Georgie, but Steve's tone told me that the surgery had been something that was stressing him out a lot. Honestly, Angie, it means a lot that you show interest in them. Some people in this office only care about themselves, it seems. But I need to get back to my computer. I'll have lunch in an hour. It would be nice to chat some more in the break room then. He smiled at me and left. I sat in front of my laptop and was practically beaming. It was so good to finally talk to someone who seemed genuinely friendly. My day went on ridiculously positive. In the break room, I soon learned that the three bullies, I'll just call them the Karens, had called in sick today. Apparently, they had some stomach issues. I continued to talk to Steve, who also introduced me to a new apprentice, who was equally nice. They even asked me to have a beer after work, but I had to decline. My social battery was completely drained and confused by all the conversation I had held that day. Even as I entered my home, I was still grinning. This magazine surely was something. I took it out of the trash, put it on the counter, and happily patted it. Great advice, I must say. Later, as I sat on the couch, I read some more. As I saw an article that pitched starfruit as a superfood for clean skin, I immediately noted it on my shopping list. It was worth a try. I went to bed happily. A few days, went by and it seemed as if the gods, if there were any, decided to start treating me as their personal favorite. I felt healthy, my skin cleared up, my time at work became bearable, pleasant even. I had been talking to a few more people, of which some even excused themselves for blindly believing the stupid rumors the Karens had spread about me. They had recovered from their sickness, but upon their return, no one really bothered to listen to their gossip. Even though I had read the magazine a few times, by then, I couldn't manage to throw it away. I saw it as a kind of good luck charm and kept it on my couch. Another week passed. As I was vacuuming, it accidentally fell to the floor. A card made out of thick, structured paper fell out. Dear waiter, are you interested in more content from our professional lifestyle? Authors, subscribe and receive a new issue of Embrace Your Life every month. All of that for an unbeatable price. Simply fill out your address and send this card back to us. See you with the next issue. I was interested. Of course, usually I never gave in to money-wasting subscriptions, this one even being an outdated paper medium. But it was intriguing. I couldn't really figure out the payment method, but I assumed they would send me a bill along with the next issue of the magazine. I quickly filled in my address information and threw the card into a postbox the next day. Second issue, March 2024. Even though the first issue I had received appeared on my doorstep on a Sunday, I didn't really expect the second one to do so as well. Was it a special delivery company that worked on weekends? Probably a pricey service, I thought. By the time I heard the soft knocking, I was in the middle of preparing breakfast. I had changed my morning routine up a bit, got up earlier, and ate a healthy breakfast as I was unusually motivated to start my days. It was the 25th of February, the last Sunday of the month. As I picked up the new issue of Embrace Your Life, I felt a warm feeling in my stomach. What a fitting title, I thought to myself. I really feel like I'm embracing my life for the first time in years. On the cover was a beautiful woman holding a fancy, heart-shaped cake, receipts that will make everyone fall in love. The subheading read, I really wasn't skilled at baking. Maybe this issue wasn't for me after all. I opened the first page, How to Get Your Crush to Only Have Eyes for You a receipt that will immediately spark love in his stomach. This sounds as if it was targeted at 14-year-olds, I thought. And also, isn't it a bit conservative to automatically assume that my crush is a he? All of this didn't really appeal to me. My thoughts drifted away. To be honest, I myself had developed quite a crush at that time. I again started thinking about Steve, as I had done many times in the last weeks. He really was amazing, but not only did he have two kids, but also a wife. She was quite nice. I had chatted to her two times by now, as she sometimes picked up Steve after work, 
but still, I wouldn't have been mad if he had turned out to be a single dad. I tried to distract myself. These thoughts about Steve felt somewhat wrong and continued. An easy to make cake with only seven ingredients, which you probably already have at home. Try it out, almonds are the key. I actually did have all of the ingredients at home. Coincidentally, I had just bought almonds the day before. I had had an unusual craving for them. Maybe this could be the start of my baking career. I giggled to myself. Worst case would be me losing a few of my almonds. I decided to give it a shot. Of course, I didn't plan to present the cake to Steve only. That would have been weird. I was planning to simply put it in the break room. My coworkers surely wouldn't mind some free cake. The receipt was ridiculously easy to follow. A little suspicious, I cut off a tiny piece of the cake for myself to try it after it had cooled down a bit. I was really surprised. Not to brag, but this was the best cake I ever had in my life. At this point I was actually a bit excited to see what my coworkers would say as they would taste it. On Monday, I brought the cake to work and placed it in the break room. After four hours of work, I came back, ready to receive praise for my amazing baking skills. Only a few crumbs were left on the plate. Angie, did you make this? Wow, you should have made two. Ah, this is just amazing. Thank you. Could you bring the way to make this tomorrow? Needless to say, everyone was a big fan. I was a bit proud, even though I had just followed the instructions of a simple 20 minute tip. Steve suddenly approached me. This is really good. I didn't know you were such a talented baker, Angie. Then his tone changed a little. Maybe you could teach me sometime. Did he just wink at me? This was just ridiculous. I couldn't help but feel excited about his words, even though they sounded like the script of a bad rom-com. My smile faded within a second as I suddenly heard someone scream. Help. She can't breathe. I think she can't breathe anymore. Someone please do something. I rushed to the next room, where the screaming came from. Karen. Yes, one of the Karens was ironically actually named Karen, lay on the floor. Her face started to turn blue. Our boss sent us all home early after the ambulance had taken Karen away. They couldn't do anything for her anymore. It turned out that she had a severe allergic reaction to almonds, which she apparently didn't know of. Back home, I just lay on my couch. I couldn't really cry, but I felt terrible. It had been my fault. I was sure. This terrible magazine. I swiped off the desk. Surprised, I noted that another thick gray card fell out of it. Dear Angie, thank you so much for your subscription. We will deliver the upcoming three issues of Embrace Your Life right to your door. Get ready for a whole new life. My name seemed to have been filled in by hand. For a moment I wondered who wrote it, but that thought quickly escaped my mind. I was devastated. At my current state of desperation, there was nothing I wanted less than to see more of this magazine. I crumpled up the card and pushed it and the magazine itself under the couch. Some time later I fell asleep. Abruptly I was woken by my ringtone. I had received a message from Steve. He had never contacted me like that before. The message read, Hey, I'd like to talk to you. What we've witnessed today upset me so much. Maybe have a glass of wine together. I replied, Sure. I was exhausted and sad, but it felt somehow right to talk. Steve and I spoke for a few hours. While we did so, I noticed how the distance between our two seats on my couch became smaller and smaller. What can I say? One thing led to another. And as Steve finally went home at 2am, I was simply confused. What was happening with my life? There was so much change in so little time, I couldn't really comprehend it. I didn't sleep that night. The following days, at the office, were strangely quiet. I met Steve in private a few more times in the afternoon. Two weeks went by. In the middle of March, I nearly slipped and fell after I had stepped on a small gray card that lay on my porch. I picked it up. Dear Angie, we hope that you enjoy the improvements initiated. Don't be afraid to follow our advice. It will surely pay out. The message was handwritten, a type of handwriting I had seen before. It wasn't hard to put two and two together. It was the same as on my thanks for your subscription card that had been laying under my couch for weeks. I noticed that I had goosebumps all over my body. Third issue, April 2024. The third issue was left on my porch on the 31st of March. As I heard the soft knocking, I ran to the door. There was nobody there. I had a bad feeling. Before throwing the issue in the trash can, I didn't even look at the headings. I copied the publishing information. I had never before heard about this company. Better you publishing. They seemed to be located in another state. Later that day, I wrote a short letter. Dear sir, madam, I would like to cancel my subscription of the magazine Embrace Your Life with immediate effect. Please do not send me any further issues. Thank you. I signed it 
and then went to the post office. It seemed strange to me at that time that there was only this address, no phone number, no email. Who doesn't have an email address in 2024? Days went by and I heard nothing more from the company. My affair with Steve went on. It felt wrong, but I couldn't really help it. It was the Wednesday in the second week of April that I saw Steve's wife in his car pulling into a parking space outside our office. The other times she had picked him up, she had been driving her own car. She slammed the door shut and ran into the office. One of my coworkers jokingly said, Man, looks like Steve is in for some trouble. <sighs> he didn't know how right he was. Steve's wife grabbed the sleeve of his shirt and pulled him outside of the office. The attempt at being discreet about their argument failed, as we all could hear them shout in the parking lot. I saw her holding up something green into his face. What was that? Then I realized it. My hair was down. Most days I wore it in a low ponytail, usually fixed with a scrunchie. My favorite. Green. Scrunchie. The scrunchie that Steve's wife had now found on the back seat of his car. As I went home that evening, I thought it wouldn't be possible to feel any worse. I was very wrong. Steve didn't come to work the next few days. As I didn't see him the following Monday, I decided to finally text him. I saw that he had received my messages, but there was no answer. That night at 2am my phone rang. Angie, I won't be coming into work the next days. I have to. Silence. Then he hung up. An hour later I received a text. I have to prepare her funeral. I couldn't breathe. I sat in silence for hours. The next day Steve called again and explained what I had already assumed. His wife had hung herself the night after confronting him in the parking lot. She knew of us. It was my fault. After repeating this sentence, in my head for hours, another thought joined silently. It was the fault of this magazine. I wanted to scream, cry, destroy something. I ran outside, grabbed the magazine from the trash, and started ripping it into little pieces. It felt therapeutic. Until, I saw it. Maybe their breakup is just what you need. This issue's featured heading. I read, Many women worry more about the luck of others than their own. It is time to focus on your luck. Don't wait for him to run towards you and leave his wife by himself. You can push things into the right direction by following a few simple steps. 1. Leave a piece of clothing or accessory in his car for her to find. I read it over and over. I had received this issue on the 31st of March. I hadn't even looked at it. I had lost my scrunchie in Steve's car on the 9th of April. Even as I am writing this weeks later, I cannot put into words how I felt upon reading this. Just, so, scared. I didn't know what to do. Later I found myself in Steve's arms, the only place I felt somewhat safe in. For the rest of April, I stayed at Steve's place. I got along well with his kids, but they were missing their mom terribly. Even though I was eaten up by guilt, I stayed in their home. I was so terribly afraid to find another magazine in front of the door of my house. It was the 28th of April when I heard the soft knocking last. I was having breakfast with his children in Steve's home. Fourth issue, May 2024. I will now get back to the start of my story. As I have said, I don't have much time left. Today is the 7th of May. If I don't find a way to stop this magazine's authors, or its power, or whatever it is, I will end my own life soon. I won't leave you in the dark about the latest issue's main article. Its heading reads, You want your man just for yourself. Remove his distracting children from your life in just three easy steps.